we're, we're, we're not, we weren't hit by kids, right? Uh, we were hit by uh, full-grown adults who knew exactly what they were doing, and their intention was, and it continues to be, to eradicate you. It, so the, the, it, the analogy is better that if somebody came up to you and tried to, tried to kill you, right? Um, he inflicted a significant wound on you, a grievous wound, but not enough to kill you. Um, what would your response be to that? Knowing that this guy has every intention to kill you again. That knife is still in his hands. What is your response going to be then? So, so I don't what, think your response would be like, hey, let me make sure we're, I, I, I cut you the exact same way you cut me. The response would be, I want to take you out of commission. And if you're killed by it, so be it. Okay. So, so here's, here's something that black people in this country in particular have wrestled with. There's nobody in the world who would suggest that the might of the Palestinian military is equal or even comparable to the might of the Israeli Which military. Is yeah, that's that, that's not a real thing. Israel really has it going on when it comes to the military. That like our police officers go there to train, right? Yeah. Um, they got that down to a science, and rightfully so, because Israel should never be a victim. There are so few Jewish people. Precious Jewish people. When I found that out, because I live in an environment where there's, they're plentiful. This is a community, right? When I found out that globally the numbers were so small, you know how and heartbreaking that is? And there's 1,400 less of us now. So, so you understand what I'm trying to say here. Um, so the military should be that way, right? Yeah. But apples to apples, Palestinian forces. That's not the same. And Palestinian people, the human beings, Hamas, full well, may have it in their creed and in their doctrine, or I forgot what word you used, but their charter or something? Charter. Yeah. yeah. To eradicate Jews. And I know that Jewish people are more precious and more valuable to this world than whatever Hamas is, right? I know that full well. I'm sure most people know that. Um. So that's a very simple decision to make, right? But when you have a response that is so overwhelming, it, it does, it does kind of call a, a scenario like the one that I posited into people's minds, I believe, because of the, again, the, the, the extra that that extra element, that extra aggression, that extra stamp, when you're stamping out this type of terrorism, comes at a civilian cost. And, you know, there are many people who says that it just, it's collective punishment. And as you know, collective punishment is a war crime. I did not vote for Donald Trump. If Donald Trump compelled me to go to war or co compelled this country to go to war, and I ended up under a building dead holding my son or something crazy like that, it would be unfair and unkind for people to say that this is just the cost of, you know, this one individual in his administration's war when there is the potential to be perhaps more surgical in, in one's response given the military might and the military intelligence. And so I think this is kind of where the frustration comes into play again. I will always and forever stand with the human beings that I know. I've hugged these people. They've invited me into their homes, Jewish people, yarmulkes on their head, sang songs with me, invited me to go and, and worship with them. My lived experience, this person that you're seeing right here, personal, right? I would never turn my back there. You deserve to feel safe. You, Ami, you deserve to feel safe. Your mom, I prayed for your mom last night. I did. But it's hard for me, a person who feels these things, to be like, well, you know what? That's it. All right. So, yeah, you know, sometimes some other people got to die because, you know, whatever, whatever. It, it just feels frustrating, man. And 